Well, all year long, the Eagan Wildcats have said they are able to play with any team in the South Suburban Conference. Tonight, they get a test against the best. The Eagan Wildcats, the Rosemont Irish, coming up momentarily here on ETV. Once again, joined by Nathan Crom. My name is Mike Cook. Thanks for being with us here tonight on your home for Wildcats sports. And Nathan, you were here on Saturday for the Wildcats, played a tough Lakeville North team, hung with them for a good chunk of the game, and then just kind of let us just kind of faded at the end a little bit. Yeah, although I will say this, if you're an Eagan Wildcat fan, you know, you if you said to me going into that game, you're going to be, a, it's a one goal game with less than two minutes to play in the third period, I would have taken it. I mean, Lakeville North is a quality program. They've got excellent players. These Wildcats are coming off a year where they won only one varsity game. They're, you know, I wouldn't say rebuilding, but they're certainly reloading. Although I think as Lakeville North found out, and I think Rosemont's going to find out tonight, this is not the same Egan team that they played last year. Absolutely. You and I had a chance to talk to Coach Todd Carlson last night, and boy, the confidence this team has is so much higher than it was a year ago at this time. Yeah, it's higher for a good reason. I mean, look at the record. They're 7-7. Seven and seven. They've beaten some good teams. They've, you know, they've struggled a, a, a couple times, you know, and that's, that's, that's just what, what teams are going to do. It's going to happen from time to time. Tonight they're gonna we're gonna have Trigla Valley in in the between the pipes for the for the Wildcats. He's the senior goaltender. He's he's used to big moments. He's had some big moments this year. He's made some great saves. We're gonna see if the defense can play good in front of him. And we're also gonna see if the Wildcats can get on on track here. Pash is an excellent goalie for the Rosemont Irish, and we're gonna see if they can put something past him. Yeah, you mentioned Posh. He was in net three nights ago when Rosemont beat Lakeville South two to one. Posh had 38 saves in that one. Rosemont comes into this one seven and zero. They're on top of the South Suburban Conference. Cats right in the middle of the pack. We're going to see what happens when we come back. You're watching ETV, your home for Wildcat sports. great to be a part of Egan history, something that all three of us are very proud of. The population of Egan is 51% female, so we've worked hard to get our department to reflect the population that we're serving. The foundation of the Egan Fire Department has been laid by many great men and women, and we have been welcomed here with open arms, very supportive. You have that family aspect with your crew. We eat dinner together and we respond to calls together, and really it's just the best job there is. I encourage all females to pursue a career that they're passionate about, regardless if it's historically been male-dominated, and that it is achievable. Give it a try, see if you're passionate about it, and if you are, you'll succeed.
to Sophia and Gabriel. Even though these old knees can't follow on your adventure to the forest today, these flowers represent my love. These stitches and threads join us together. And wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. For tonight's South Suburban Conference matchup, featuring our visitors, the Rosemont Irish and Young Egan Wildcats. Let's meet the starting lineups beginning with our visitors. In goal, number 35, Will Posh. On defense, number two, Riker Sabo. On defense, number 20, Burke Retka. At wing, number 14, Isaac Lewis. At wing, number 23, Keith Campbell. At center, number 27, Luca Salak. Head coaches, Ricky Sainty, assisted by Dan Google and Rick Sainty Sr. Ben Barbino! 
Well, Nathan and Boyd, sure sounds like the crowd is ready for this one. I'm looking to our right. There are a lot of Egan fans here, and there are a lot of people wearing the uh, blue and yellow making the trek up from Rosemont tonight. So the barn shall be rocking. Here's the Irish take on the Wildcats for the first time this season. Well, Mike, let's just hope that this game lives up to its billing. You've got a full house. You've got a lot of people on both sides. Everybody wants to see how this turns out. I think it's going to be exciting. I think it's going to be a nail-biter from start to finish. If one team gets a little bit of a lead, the other team's going to claw back into it. It's an intra-district rivalry. I won't say throw the records out completely because, let's face it, you know, Rosemont has a better record than the Wildcats. They're 7-0 in the conference. But at the same time, you know, the Wildcats are playing their best hockey of the year and were competed with. They the beat Bloomington Jefferson their best game of the year last week, and then on Saturday, they competed with Lakeville North right up to the very end. I think these Wildcats have something here for these Irish. We'll see what happens. You and I had a talk, chance to talk to Coach Todd Carlson last night, and he said, if you can't get up for Rosemount, what are you doing here? He said, you know, years ago, Eastview was probably the big rivalry. Now it's the Rosemont Irish and Egan Wildcats. The big rivals going at it tonight. Cats win the draw there in the Rosemount zone. Cron to keep a long shot. Easy save for Posh. Again, Posh the netminder, Will Posh. 38 saves for the senior last time out against Lakeville South in that 2-1 Irish win. Yeah, Posh is, Posh is going to be the ba big backstop that the Irish are going to re rely on. Not a shot from Cron that's going to really trouble Posh too much, but we'll take it if you're an Egan supporter. Not trying to circle, get it out of their own zone, battling over there on the board. Number 11, Owen Hendrickson, one of the defenders for the uh, Rosemont Irish. Also one of the captains on that squad. Quick shot opportunity, Katz. Posh makes another save. Redwood is right there in front, but it was Leighton Olsen with an opportunity. Olsen runs into a defenseman in the Rosemont zone. Irish took it to bring it out, and they do. Here they come down the right side. Rosemont likes to get out in a hurry. Oh, shot through the valley. Watches that one go wide off the stick of Zap. Redka. First shot of the, the first attempt of the game for the Rosemont Irish. Just went wide of the cake, not an official shot. As we're a minute gone by here in this one, Rosemont's going to dump it in off of Liebert. That's Carson Liebert, the defenseman number five. We're calling that name a lot tonight for the Irish. We're able to keep the zone. Opportunity. Puck pops up. No, it does not. Hans Hedlund had an opportunity there. The Val, nice job of just reaching up to kind of stick that out of the way. We got a man in front, and that's one nothing Irish. Owen Durgan at 118. Well, Durgan's going to not get it. It's not going to be much easier for Durgan this year, this season, than to do what he just did, which is camp out. Watch him right here in the center, 24. Nobody's on him. Nobody's. You, you can't let a guy be not in the house against against the Irish and and not have anybody on him. You know, there's a guy circling around behind it. But Durgan that time was wide open, and you expect him to, to bury it. You also, you know, would like to see Trig Trig Valley get it, try to get a little more of it. This is third of the year for Durgan, number 24. Trying to get the award on who gets the assist, but here comes Rosemont again. This one down that right side. Hansen leads the rush. It's Ty Hansen taken out by Kron. Nick, but catch who got the assist, but we'll get it. Some, we'll get it between periods for you. Well, Egan finds himself in a hole quickly. Need to get it out of the zone. Sending it in deep is Gus Gly. He'll be out there with 21, Gavin Doyle, and 17, Alex Lockenmeyer. And here comes Rosemont once again. Trying to get that long outlet pass. A little too far was the pass from Jackson Ganser, but Rosemont's going to change completely behind the play. And they shall regroup in their own end with Sabo, number two. Rutgers Sabo, the junior defenseman. I thought the neutral. Rosemont is going to gain it again. Dump it in. Down should be an icing, and indeed it is. With just over two minutes gone by. Well, it's an early goal against against Trigla Valley, and the Wildcats are going to have to regroup here a little bit. But at the same time, look, there, there's still 50 minutes, 49 minutes of hockey to play. They've only got one goal. There's no question that the Wildcats, if they continue, I mean, I like what I, the energy's there, the physical hitting is there. They've had some shots on Posh already. Let's see if they can get, let they can convert. I'll tell you, the last couple of games, Cam Roth, 23, Rowan Phillips, 25, were on this line. They have played extremely well for the Eagan Wildcats. They're out there right now with number 13, Matt Hansen. Just a matter of time before Matt breaks through. Down at neutral, Rosemont tries to control at center. Roth in there for the Wildcats. He gets 23 for Rosemont, Caden Campbell. And this will be Campbell dumping in there. Actually, Headman's it up to number 14, Isaac Lewis. 
That pair's out there along with Solid, and we've got a big hit. Egan's student section liking that one. Well, what's not to like? Eric Pika decided, enough of this skating stuff. I'm just going to put you into the boards. Nice job by Pika. And if Pika hits you, you're going to feel it. Here's Hendrickson to regroup for the Irish. Coming up near side, through the middle. This is number nine with the puck. Couldn't quite control at that time. It was Redka. And the Cats poke it out. Olsen goes off his stick. Cats are going to change one behind the play. That goes all the way down. Should not be an icing. It is not. Kron, he's taken out hard by Redka. The Wildcats are going to get it out as Wedward runs into his teammate, Pika. Pika loses the puck deep. Rosemont down low, trying to center in front. Another opportunity for the Irish. But Trig Laval with a big save. Nice play. defense has got to wake up. Yeah, nice play by Lavalle to come over. I, I, that time it was, you know, Kron plays it. He plays it along. Well, this time, Kron, watch here. He steps in and does a nice job of blocking the shot with his stick. We'd like to see Henry Martin pick up pick up the backside guy a little, little harder. But that time, the Wildcats, it was an exception to the rule. So far, Mike, the Wildcats, every time they're touching the puck in their defensive zone, it's coming out. And if that trend continues, that bodes well for the Wildcats. Absolutely. Something we have not, well, it's been kind of spotty this season. That shot goes just wide for the Rosemont Irish. They're up by a 1 0 count. Here comes two on one for the Cats. Opportunity. Tried to feather it across, couldn't quite connect that time. Wildcats looking to get that equalizer. Good opportunity. Nothing happening, though, with uh, Goyle and Bly on the missed connection. Here comes the Irish. Wheeling through center. Lieber. Shot Laval right. Left pad save there. Left out in front. It's way out from the Irish. And Laval gets the glove on that off the shot from Jake Toll. Toll had both goals in that win over Lakeville South three nights ago for the Irish. Well, and I just want to say something nice about Jake Toll right now because not only does he have this shot on, on Nepity, he had the breakup of the two on one on the other end, showing end to end action. Nicely done by Toll. Yeah, Toll, just a junior on this Rosemont squad. And Rosemont tries to control the puck in the Wildcats zone. Instead, it's going to be the Wildcats poking it out. Tried to get it to Lockenmeyer, intercepted by the Irish. Kron against the aggressive Rosemont forecheck. Kron's got to keep him in. Kron's got to get that puck up. He's got to get that puck up and get it out. There's a situation where he he should have that out of the zone. Ganser, give it Carlson. Ganser, or Carlson gets it back, sends it up top. Here's Save. Oh. Trying to get it to Save, but now his puck does come out. Nice job defensively by Goy or Gly for the Wildcats. Here's Ganser. High over into the netting. Face off, Wildcat zone. 12-16 to go here in the first. Rosemont up by a 1-0 count. As you said, Rosemont, they lead the conference at 7-0. 8-5 overall, but a little deceptive because we were looking. They've been playing some top teams. They have been playing some top teams. And 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 you know, and so the results show at the same time, you know, a one in a one in five non-conference record. I don't care who you're playing is. Definitely not what you want if you're the Rosemont Irish. But and they need to make it 2 nothing there. Good opportunity for Campbell. Oh, it seems, oh sorry. I interrupt you, Mike. <laughs> I was going to say, Parker Jensen in for the Wildcats for 28. His first shift to the hockey game. And we'll see if Parker can do something with that big body of his. Absolutely. But I'll tell you right now, the, the Rosemont Irish are, are doing something intentional. Last few times down the ice, they've set up a guy in the slot. And they're trying to get it to that guy in the slot. Um, and so that's really what, I mean, that clearly seems to be the pattern here for the Irish. And Solid sets up Lewis, but Laval with the save. In his fourth save of the hockey game. You look at Trigatron, and we'll see the replay here. Nice job of trying to shoot through the screen, though, that time by Lewis. Yeah, using the defender as a screen, it's very, very smart, no question about that. Wins the draw, keeps it in the Wildcat zone. Shot that went just wide of the cage. Weaver, I think, was looking for a tip on that. Didn't happen. And can the Wildcats come out with this? It'll be Redward. Redward cross center line, dumps it in. He's out there with Late Molson. He's going to go in deep for the Wildcats. Redward's going to take his man out behind the cage. Kept in. No, not at the point. Poked out that time by a red cut. A nice play. And of course, he gets dumped in the Wildcat zone. Was my turn, dump it in. They got a tag. They do. A change up four behind the play as Recky goes in alone on the four check. Lays a big hit on a Wildcat. Nice job by Barbado to maintain control of that puck. 
Redward couldn't quite control that one in the neutral zone. They'll try to poke it out once again. Redward backhands it across. Dangerous play far side, but Barbados going to get there for the Wildcats. He shattered over there by Headland for the Irish, number 26. Wildcats need to settle down here a little bit. A little bit. There's a little bit of, I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to be doing here, and that's not going to get it done against the Irish. Puck does squirt back out to neutral, and Roosevelt will be forced to regroup. It's going to be Sable. He's going to send it back near side. This is Burt Redka, number 20. And we have 10 18 to go here in the first one, nothing Irish. Yeah, a little bit of chaos. I would not say chaos, but I didn't see a lot of continuity there in the last couple of sessions, couple of shifts for the Wildcats. They need to calm down, settle down, and play their game. There's Pika, sends it across. Tries to get Murray with it, couldn't quite control. Rosemont looking to break a man out, unable to do so. Should be an icing, and it is, but they had Caden Haggerty leaking out there at the blue line, and had they got him, it was one on one with he and Trigg. Yeah, they did, and, and you know, Pika there has got, you know, Pika with that cross D to D pass, he's got to give Murray a pass he can handle. Murray couldn't handle that pass, and that's what created the turnover. But Pika's got to give him a more gentle, or, you know, firmer, or more flatter, or more gentle pass. In any event, next, next, the next face off. Cats making last change. Face off to the left of Will Posh. Almost seven minutes gone by, opening period. Here, the South Suburban Conference clash. Pika backhands that one in deep for the Wildcats. Redward eludes one man. And pucks in the walk at the half wall stop. Spin Hendrickson for Rosemont is going to send it back near side. Irish look to get something going out of their zone. Just off the skates of Retka. And Rosemont will try it once again. Here's Hendrickson. Kept in by Pika. He and Retka battles. And Retka's able to poke it out. Cat's going to force to regroup. Murray, oh, fanned on the shot, now or the pass, now he gets it across as the Cats dump it in. Three-player change for Coach Todd Carlson and the Wildcats. Here comes Rosemont, Hendrickson's going to dump that one in as the Irish are going to change a few behind the play as well. Trying to get the long outlet pass, unwise pass, Hendrickson gets it for Rosemont, and the puck does just squirt out across the blue. I don't understand that. Pika could see him there, camped out, waiting for that pass. If someone was watching, I think we're going to have icing here, or, or I'm offsides, offsides. Yep. But, you know, Pika could see him there. Look, I mean, the book on Egan is they like to do that. They like to break out with that pass just over the red line. And, you know, if Pika, if, if Rosemont's going to jump on that all night, then the Wildcats are going to have to make an adjustment, Mike. Yeah, the Rosemont player, I mean, he was just outside the blue, and the Wildcats was back at the red line. That was, that was just too easy for the Irish to intercept that. Here's Barbado for the Wildcats. It back near side. Barbado had three helpers the other day against Lakeville North, by the way. Inside nine minutes to go, opening period. Here on ATU, puck is tipped. And Posh, aggressive play near side over there to Liebert. And once again, here come the Rosemont Irish. We've said this a number of times already tonight. They like to come down that right side. Backhand in front, rebound, hit the iron. Ty Hansen nearly makes it two rip. Well, clean living for Trig LaValle. A little help from the pipes never hurts. An alert play by Kron to sneak in behind LaValle and get a stick there to make sure that it doesn't get pushed into the goal. Watch here. It's a backhand off the post. Kron number LaValle's going to sit back on it. Kron's going to push it up against his goaltender as LaValle sits on it. And it was still loose there, so it was nicely done by, by Kron to, to knock that down and keep it, keep it from being a rebound. Well, Ty Hansen had that golden opportunity there. I believe it would have been his first goal of the year had he connected. Just a sophomore playing for the Irish. Long breakout pass, Wildcats just off sides. If they're not liking that in the Egan student section, the Rosemont fans beg to differ. It would well, be, nice, be nice if we had a, re a replay on that, but it'll be hard to see if yeah, it's hard, it's yeah. hard to see with, from that angle what, what was going on with it. But with the naked eye, I thought it was a good call. But it looked like a good call, but you never, it's, it's one of those you just want to see it again, right? To make sure. And we've got dueling student chance going on. And traffic! Two, nothing. Irish rebound. Haggerty, goal. Well, Hagerty does what, what is the easiest thing to do, which is stand there, wait for a rebound, watch him on the left side of your screen. He shoots, all the Wildcats are puck watching. He's got two forwards out front. 
and Trigla Valley's got no chance. No. 23's camped out there by himself. The forwards have got to come back and cover that stuff. Otherwise, otherwise, you know, I mean, Eggerty's going to have all, all, all day. I stand corrected. It's Caden Campbell, 23. I thought it was, Mission thought it was 22. So apologies to Caden Campbell and his fan club. It's going to be Campbell with the goal that, dare I say, you or I might have been able to knock yeah, in. Yeah, well, absolutely, you or I could have done that. But so, that's, that's the Wildcats falling asleep on defense. And it's not the defenders, it's the forwards. Seventh shot of the night for the Irish. Two of them have counted. Wildcats have got to just calm down and play their game. And the, right now, they're not doing that. I mean, against Jefferson and against Lakeville North, they were quick on defense. They were solid in making decisions. Right now, they're not doing that. Here comes Cam Roth for the Wildcats. He loses it. Numbers not in his favor at all. Murray tries to poke it in. And Rosemont takes over once again. Rosemont has absolutely taken over in this one. Here's Pika for the Cats. Pika laid out a big hit early. Probably been the loudest cheer of the night so far for the Egan Wildcat fans. Murray spins, goes to get it ahead. Wedward just a hair too far for Wedward. And Sable to regroup for Rosemont. But again, they just poke it out so quick. And Wedward gets out of the way of that hit right at the center. Rozak for Rosemont with the with the pop or attempted pop. Crop from way out. Posh easy save there. That had some bounce to it, Mike. I like that shot from Crown from the point. That was smart. But I like how Posh got down on that puck, had the stick in front of him, the whole body in front of him. Too many goalies would just kind of had that stick down and that cats with some pressure this time. Redward well, not able to keep it in. Cats far side shot through. Posh watches that one go away. Quick change behind the play for the Wildcats. As Gly comes back onto that. Opportunity for Wedward. Goal! Dylan Wedward lighting the lamp. It's going to be Wedward from Kron and Olsen. 10 35 on that one. Beautiful shot by Wedward. Kron pinches it in. Olsen chips it over to Wedward. Wedward buries it over Posh. I, I think Posh was screened. I do too. Looked like, looked like Redka was in his way. But that's just what the doctor ordered for these Wildcats to climb back into it. Wedward for Kron and Olsen, I think it's, it's what it's going to be, but we'll have to see what the official is. Team leading 10th goal of the year for Wedward. We'll get the official word from Nick Johnson. Olsen and Kron with the helpers on that goal for the Wildcats. 35 time of that one. Shot goes just wide. Actually was held on to Jake Peterson with a long attempt for the Irish. Peterson number seven leading point getter for the Rosemont squad. Eight goals and ten assists according to the Minnesota Hockey Hub. Well if the Irish thought the Wildcats were going to crawl up and go away after this after early early flurry. Uh, I guess so far the Wildcats have answered the bell. There's Phillips. And Puck does come back into the Wildcats zone. Pika shadowed by Ganser. There's a four check that time. Peterson for the Irish number seven. Really sends it around. Hansen over there. The battle down low. Good aggressive four check. We're just going to say no penalties yet in this hockey game. Well, Phillips did a great job there not to take a penalty. Absolutely. I mean, you know, he just pushed him off the puck, but you can do that. He didn't grab him. He didn't haul him down. It was nicely done. Ganser try, leaves it for a fellow Rosemont Irish. And Ganser in deep. Rosemont's going to change one behind the play. Hard into the corner. Big hit. You see the boys on the glass loving that one. All the way down. Official arm in the air. Should be an icing. And despite Matt Hansen's best efforts, it is. Let's take a look at the, we've got the student section a little pumped here. Yeah, Hansen went in hard and Roth went in harder. I mean, it's bottom line is, you know, he, he, you know it's, it's, it's going to be a physical game. You know that between Rosemont and Egan. And Cam Roth is, is no stranger to physical contact. It's going to go over far side. Actually, the cats are going to get trolled behind the net. This is Kron. 
Look at the turnover in the Wildcats zone as that went off of the teammate's stick. It was Barbado, I think. No. Anyway, Rosemont controls briefly. Here comes Wedward. Three on two, numbers for the Cats. Wedward tried to feather it. Barbado tried to feather it ahead. Oh, and Martin Huss was yeah, hustling back was Campbell. Martin was trying to walk it in, but he should have just shot Mike Cook. I agree with you. He should have just shot. He had guys in front. Another, another dangerous play in the Egan zone. They keep it in far side. The Irish will. Shot that was knocked away by the defenseman. I think it was Cron got in the way of that one. Rosemont keeps that one in at the blue line. Half wall puck out. Rosemont to regroup. They are outside. Here's Tall, far side, left side. Oh, Moore tries to leave it in the dot. Tolt could actually get it back behind the net. Long shot tipped that time on the way through. Rekka's attempt went wide of the cage. And this will be Lieber to regroup for Rosemont. Another big save, LaValle. Opportunity wind up shot. That goes high of the cage. Good opportunity out there for Salik. Coming down at three and a half to go in the first. Rosemont got the first two. Edward answered for the Wildcats. And that one is going to squirt back out to neutral. Dump back in by Rozak. And Rosemont's going to change. Looks like three behind the play. Opportunity that's going to go wide of the cage. And Rozak sneaking into the slot again, Mike. Same, same plan over and over again. Wildcats have got a counter. People couldn't control, but really cast it to get it out. And they come through this time. Here's Kron going to lead the rush from his blue line. Got a little help. Got three guys in the centers and cross. Couldn't quite connect with anybody. As the Irish got in the way of that one. And Rosemont quickly out of their own zone. Here comes number 12, Ryan Rozak. Got his man coming down the middle. Kron gets in the way of that pass that was intended for number 24, Durgan. And back out, Irish regroup. Oh, Rosemont is so fast coming out of that zone. They're not spending much time there, Mike, and, and they, they're very intentional about what they're doing. It's a sign of a well-coached team. 8-6 right now in favor of the Irish when it comes to shots on goal. 2-1 to one where it matters the most. And again, they're back into the Wildcat zone. The Cats cleared out. Tried to poke it ahead in neutral and able to get it through, but Roth is able to dump it in. Parker Jensen's going to get chased, pick number 28. He's out there with Phillips, 25, and Roth, 23. See, see Hendricks and the defenseman for, for the Irish did not want any part of getting hit by, by Parker Jensen. You, you noticed that, too. Oh, he saw him coming. He turned he said, quick. He turned away real quick. And I don't blame him. No, I wouldn't want to get hit by him either. I mean, good gracious. I'm not saying he's stupid. I'm just kind of pointing out the obvious. And now it should be an ice on the Eagle Outcast, and indeed it is with... Buck 35 to go here in this opening period. Hey, don't forget you can follow ETV all season long on your favorite social media. We've got Twitter, we've got Facebook, you've got the YouTube channel. Be sure and check it out. Uh, subscribe to this. You can subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss a game. So be sure and check out all your social media channels. Egan TV on Twitter, Facebook, and the YouTube. And don't forget archive games on there as well. Oh, nobody home. It's center in front. Puck's going to go all the way back down where Murray will regroup. But Gans are down there again for the Rosemont Irish. They like to send that guy in deep. Be it Ganser or be, I think I saw Peterson do it once. Uh, Picka or Retka, check that. Minute to go, opening period. Two to one Irish here on ETV. Turnover. Barbado overskates the puck. Rosemont, nice hit. Lockenmeyer, he dropped Carlson. Out. Nice spin move that time. Haggerty. Haggerty down that right side. Looking to center. He's got a man in front. Again, Cass just let a guy drift right down to the middle. Backhand deep. Here's Kron. He and Haggerty exchange bumps. Haggerty comes away with it. They got a man in front. Shot. Just whistling one wide. That time was Durgan. He opened the scoring early in this first period for the Irish. Wildcat boards have got to be looking for that guy. There's a nice high hard one off the glass. Nicely done, Kron. The Wildcats have got to look for that guy in the slot. Coyle across. 
And nice shot by that time Posh to knock things out of harm's way. Puck to the corner. Around and that should do it for period number one. 17 minutes gone by. It's the Rosemont Irish two. And the Eagan Wildcats one. The shots are eight to seven. I mean the Irish looked like for a moment for about three or four minutes that they were going to dominate this game. Really run away with it. The Wildcats answer off of Woodward and, and right now you got to feel really good. If, I think if you're going back into the into locker room for the Wildcats after we have some little chippers. Um, I think we're gonna. I'm gonna feel pretty good about the situation. Wildcats are gonna take their spots on the blue lines. <laughs> we've got we've got a a puck for a young man here in the front row. We've got the little chippers coming up. We're gonna be sure to show those to you here on ETV. Always fun to showcase the called mite prep program or what do they call it a mini it used to be mini mites. Dynamites. Yeah, there might might something. I you anyway, know. Here, well, here they come. Call them what you will, because here they come. We've yeah. got one wipeout already. Yeah. Com com compared to the big boys, they are definitely mini mites. It looks like we've got. I'm assuming that's the Coyotes in the maroon and black. And and the Jets made it through quarantine to make it down south of the border. Yeah, I, I want to check their papers. I, I think we should. No, I'm just kidding. What's that? I was going to say I want to check their papers. But yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> it, was, it was it was a vague it was a vague reference. Absolutely. No, oh, but you know, hey, the young Jets can make it. The real Jets, you know, can't. But a far more uh, imbalanced, shall we say, in favor of the Coyotes in this one. I think we're going to see what the Jets have got on. You know, but all the way the way the Coyotes uh, play, I think or shouldn't the uh, real the big Coyotes play? Shouldn't they? Oh. oh my goodness! Shouldn't they uh, have an extra couple guys on the ice? Absolutely! Wow, cheap shot, huh? That was a cheap shot at the uh, NHL Coyotes. Yes. Yeah. Then again, nobody in Arizona even notices they're there. I so. don't think anybody in Arizona is watching. Well, maybe they are. We might have some grandparents tuning in tonight. Uh, where it's yeah, but they're all snowbirds, aren't they? Or, or, or their roots are here. So what do they care, right? Yeah, well, it's all good. Yeah, okay, I mean, fine. That's fine. like you know, it's like when people like you know, it's like when people slam certain college football programs that can never beat Wisconsin until this year. It's like you know. How do you feel about that? You're in Minnesota. I'm like, well, since I didn't go to the U of M, you know, I'm not going to really care too much about it. So now that we're done row the boat references, I wanted to, they had something here. I think it was about 10 days ago. It was something kind of cool down at Ron Park. They had the annual Mike Jamboree. They did. And it was all, all these future Wildcats, young men, young girls, they were down there just living it up. The varsity girls were down there. The varsity boys were down there. Yep. They had the music going. It just... Just a fun outdoor atmosphere, the way hockey should be when you're growing up. Yeah, we had a great day for it, Mike. It was it was relatively warm, you know, as, as outdoor jamborees go. And at the same time, it was it was cold enough to, you know, you didn't want to stay out there all day long. But uh, for the parents who aren't skating around, it gets a little cold. For the little ones, the girls and the boys, they're in good shape as the Jets even it up. You see that? Got a minute and a half to go on this one. Again, I'm going to give Egan Hockey credit. They do such a nice job with that event every year. And they've done, you know, and the funny thing is, they've really done a nice job with it for a decade. I mean, I, I mean, when you know my kids were, were that might age, they loved that stuff. They, I still have, I still have autographed pucks in my house from, from varsity players from 10 years ago. Now I'm not saying they're on display. I'm, you know, they're they're they are, you know, they're in a drawer somewhere. But, <laughs> but I still have them in my house where you know some some kid, some guy named you know Tony with at number 33 or number 23, <laughs> he signed it, and my kid. To him, that was the whole for about for about a week. That was the whole world. Shot. Oh, we got a Coyote lead. Not much time here for the Jets no. to equalize. We're going to see if they put the Jets on here. Huh, see how he did that? I'm, I'm looking for Benny. <laughs> Benny and the Jets. Come on, Benny and the Jets. Oh, yeah. I know. Was um, that music? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Elton John, wasn't it? Yeah, but from like 19 like 42 or something. Well, it was before we were born, even. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably. All right, yeah. All right, yeah. All right, all right. Uh, Anyway, and back meanwhile, back at the rink. Coyotes, Jets. It's, come on, Jets, you got to break it out. Yeah, got to break it Stop. out. Stop. Go. Got to go. Got to go. You got about 15 seconds, guys. 15 to go. It's going to take a big outlet pass here from number five. Let's go, boys. Oh. Will they get the outlet pass they need? The Coyotes do have an empty net down here. I think all these Mike games don't they always have an empty net? Well, yeah, but I'm just trying to be positive. But again. Well, it's again, good, it's good for the save percentage, yeah. right? 
all these goalies out here, they have a perfect save percentage, don't they? Well, that was the future of Wildcat hockey, or at least some of it. Again, it's the Coyotes, the Jets. Always fun to watch the little chippers here at the Egan Civic Arena. Well, after one period, it's the big boys trailing the Rosemont Irish by a two to one count. We're gonna be back in a little while, little, little while. You're watching Wildcat Hockey on ETV. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Susanna. We're gonna to talk to you about on ice and off ice safety. Hi friends. We're gonna talk a little bit about safety today before we get on the ice. One of the first things to look for is down at your feet. It's really important to make sure that you don't have laces that are hanging. You can either tuck them into your socks or into a pair of tight pants. That's so much better. The next thing that I wanna talk about is keeping our heads safe. I recommend whether you're two or 62, if this is your first time skating or your first time taking classes, that you wear a helmet. You can bring a bike helmet from home or you can rent one here at the rink. It'll look just like this. I feel ready to get out on the ice now. How about you? I'm so excited to step out on the ice with you guys, but we have to talk about one more thing first so that we can be really safe. That's falling down and getting up safely. When I feel like I'm going to fall backwards, I bend forward, my knees bent, my arms out in front of me, and leaning forward. That's gonna keep me from falling backwards. If I'm still gonna fall, I'm gonna try to go down safely to one side. That's the easiest way to do it. When I'm ready to get up, I'll put my hands and knees on the ice, put one foot up first, but keep my hands firmly on the ground. Put the other foot up, and then stand up slowly. If my feet are stuck apart, I can walk them in. I feel ready to get on the ice now. Let's go. We have to remember to watch our step, and we also wanna look left and right before we get on, just like when we're crossing traffic. Whoa! That was Coach Susanna. Let's hear some more from her. Hi there, I heard you are all ready to get on the ice. We're gonna start off with our safety pose again because as you can see, we're on the ice and now it's really slippery. We're gonna go over our safety pose one more time. Knees are bent, hands are out in front of me and I'm leaning forward just a little bit so I don't fall backwards. When I fall, I fall onto my side if I can. I get on my hands and knees, one foot goes up, then the other, and I keep my hands on the ice until I feel safe enough to stand all the way up. A few more things to keep you safe. Skates are really sharp, so let's try not to kick when we're on the ice. When you do fall down, let's try and get up as fast as we can and do so in a safe way. If you're ever in a lesson, it's really important that you are always listening to your teacher. And a really good way to show that is your feet are nice and quiet. The other thing we want you to make sure that you do is to take your time. Whether it's new or old skills, just for your safety and your friend's safety, we wanna make sure that you're going nice and slow so no one gets hurt. Thanks for watching, catch you next time. a space where someone could bring a family member or a friend or a neighbor and not have to worry about any exclusion. This park can adapt to all different people uh, regardless of what their abilities are. On the average playground, I'll just be on the sidelines, be like, yay, yay, you did it. But now I get to be like, come on, let's go play it all together. We know 
that inclusive play teaches important life skills like cooperation, empathy, and leadership. And it helps build relationships and community around those same values. Come to this park because you're going to have an awesome time. It's inclusive for everyone. There's lots of things to do for both young ones and older ones. I was more than happy to participate in it, actually being a former student athlete here at the high school. The ladder is an acronym, uh, leadership, accountability, determination, discipline, empower, and resiliency. It's make sure you do your part, make sure you do your thing, make sure you get one step at a time and make sure you do your stuff, but at the same time, you gotta bring people up on the ladder with you. Being able to do a photo with the fire truck, uh, especially with the ladder and climb the ladder with it was, uh, was pretty fun. It's really nice as a football player to know that you have a community behind your back and uh, that you have people there to support you. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. 
Hey, we welcome you back inside the Egan Civic Arena where I always want to remind you, Egan TV is hiring production crew members. You can be a part of the team that broadcasts sporting events just like this one, as well as just about every other sport at Egan High School. You also help out with meetings and other community events. Plus, you have the opportunity to shoot, write, edit videos for the cable channels along with social media. So check out part of the ETV op opportunities. You can check it out at cityofegan.com slash jobs. And as you look at that shot there, that Dalton Gruber holding the camera there in the top of that, of that uh, top of your screen there. He's running the show here tonight in Wildcat Country, part of the ETV crew. We also have Greg Borman and Tom Schreiber here running cameras tonight. And he's Nathan Cron. Again, my name is Mike Cook, and we're happy to be with you. Two to one Irish as we head into the second period of action. Oh, Zamboni's made his few laps, and we're just waiting for some officials and some teams. Well, second period has both been feast, both feast and famine for the Wildcats. There have been a couple of t games this year where the second period has they've really you know, struggled with that long change, especially for the defensemen. There have been some some games where they've really scored really well in the in the first in the first, you know, in that second period. I just want to give a couple of cor quick corrections here. The first first goal for Lakeville, or excuse me, Lakeville. <laughs> I got Lakeville in the brain. Rosemount was scored by Haggerty hmm. with assists to Durgan and Liebart. Uh, that was at 15:45, and then at 8:10, uh, Campbell from Sabo and Lewis, and then of course. Uh, Wedward from Cron and Olsa at 625. So referees are coming back out onto the ice. I expect that we're going to have quite a, quite a period. It's going to be a big test here for these Wildcats with a long change. I mean, yes, they get the second change, but you know, in terms of matchups, but but it's going to you know, long change is always going to be a challenge uh, for every team. Yeah, I want to take a quick opportunity as well. Egan's next home game is going to be Saturday against Eastview, seven o'clock start. And as you saw right before we came back in here, one of the public service announcements was about mental health and mental health awareness. So, well, Saturday night is Mental Health Awareness Night here at the Civic Arena. Yeah, it, it absolutely is Mental Health Awareness. Um, it, there are going to be some. They're all sort. Their T-shirts are going to be on sale here. Uh, you can also get T-shirts if you're uh, with Egan, at Egan High School um, during the week. I think they're on sale. To, they were on sale today. I think they're going to be also on sale tomorrow. I'm not sure about Thursday. Uh, wait, today's yeah, today's Tuesday. So Thursday. <laughs> I think the rest of the um, week they're in yeah, school. Well, but no, Friday they're not. Why not? They're in school. Yeah, you're. Yeah, they're in school. Right. Well, that's 196. Right. You can't have a five-day week. That's well. Uh, right, right, Rosemont fans. Uh, co co complaints can be directed to Mike Cook here of ETV. Um, no, but it, yeah, but we're also uh, what's great is we're all the proceeds. We're going to be selling those T-shirts as well as doing some other things to raise money for mental health awareness. And half the proceeds from that night are going to go to um, the Minnesota. I believe it's the Minnesota Hockey Coaches Association uh, mental health um, awareness campaign. Uh, and then the and then the other half of the proceeds are going to go to the Jordan Clark Foundation. Uh, who I know Coach Carlson here at Egan is it was very close to Carlson, uh, uh, the uh, Clark family, um, and and she passed away, um, and gives us you know a, a good reminder to to, to be careful and, and help people when you know help whenever we can. We've got dealing with mental mental health challenges. Yeah, just remember if you, if you're hurting, talk to somebody. Absolutely, call 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 me. <laughs> call you. Call anybody. Hey, if, if if we can help, we will. Absolutely. As we get said, as you said, this will be the long change period. The Egan Wildcats are going to be moving left to right across the screen. Rosemont right to left. No penalties in that opening period. And Rosemont had no penalties in their last game against South. Well, that's, you know, that's a recipe for success. I mean, it, Rosemont, you know, look, that's a, and that's the evidence of a, a, a you know, evidence of a well-coached team, Mike. I mean, you don't take penalties. You don't put yourself in a bind. And here we go for the second period. Yeah, Rick Sainty is the head man for the Rosemont Irish. And of course, Todd Carlson, head man here in Wildcat Country. Special your shout out to Mata watching us up in Sauk Rapids tonight. See if her Wildcats can rally in this one. As we start period number two from the Civic Arena. Wildcats long outlet pass, tried to get it ahead to Goyle on that far side, but it's going to be Rosemont dumping it in. But it will be an icing on the dump. The Wildcats, and there looks like, are we changing? We're not changing forwards. All right, for this forward combination of Lockenmeyer, Goyle, and Glide tonight, they they were shut down for the most part. Glide did get a goal against Lakeville North, but they they didn't have a whole lot of success against Lakeville North. They had some shots, but didn't quite tally enough. We want to see this line get on track here tonight. Yeah, well, we had a talk, chance to talk to Coach Carlson again yesterday, and it was just kind of it was. Nice to ask him about. Hey, we're seeing some guys that are starting to light the lamp that are really long overdue. If if you can, you know, say that in a kind of a positive way. 
You know, the chances have been there. They just haven't been able to light the lamp, but they've been able to get that red light flashing here in the last few games. Oh, huge save of Alley. Speaking of guys that have been playing well. Yeah, Trick Lavalli, when he's when he's not having to defend against two on zeros in the crease or something like that, or when there's not a defensive breakdown in front of him, watch Lavalli here slide to his right with a glove hand. You know, if Lavalli sees it coming in, Mike Cook, I don't, you know, I think he's as almost, I, I think he's as good as any keeper, any any goalie here in the in the South Suburban. And how difficult it is as a shooter. I mean, you're looking at somebody that has a right-handed catch. I don't know if that matters to you as a shooter, but it's just, you know. How many people catch with their left hand? I mean, the strong majority of people. By the way, Laval coming into this one, 314 on the goals against average with a .890 on his save percentage this year. Record is three and four under this one as he and Gabe Gly have split net duties for the Wildcats this year. And both are doing a really good job, really pressing each other, we've been told. And, they're, and they've been really good friends about it too. Cats down low. There's Wedward. He got one earlier for Egan. Puck knocked down by the Irish. Kept in Barbado. He makes a move. Long shot high off the blocker. Posh up into the netting. Face off in the Rose Mountain zone with just about two minutes gone by on this one. You know, the, the, the Egan defensemen have seemed to have their own calling card in terms of what they like to do. You know, Kron's got this little snapshot he, he puts on from the point. Barbado's got that little move that he makes on the, at that blue line to get, to get the defender going one way, and then he pulls it back and goes around him. Nice job by Ben Barbado. Rosemont controls the drop. Peterson's going to ring it around far side. Hager to be able to poke that one out. Arm is in the air. Will it be an ice? No, they wave it off at the last moment. Good aggressive play there by the Rosemont Irish. This one will be an icing, though, on the Egan Wildcats, and face off to the right of Trago Valley. Yeah, Murray just a little too strong there. He's looking for looking for that middle ice stretch. And didn't, didn't, didn't quite come off for him. Let's see if the Wildcats here in this second period might cook and guard that slot the way that they were a little struggling a little bit with here in, in the first period. Haggerty, Durga, and Headland out there right now for the Irish. 22, 24, 26 respectively up front for the South Suburban Conference leaders. Undefeated in conference play coming into this one are the Rosemont Irish. Eight and five overall. Cats at 500 both in conference play and overall. Well, you, thought, you thought the Cats might be, the, be in that type of a position, Mike. I mean, you know, you, you thought the Cats with, you know, with, with the seniors they have, the, the players they have, the goalies that they have. I mean, 500 sounds, if you said they were going to be 500, 14, 15 games in, I would, that would be about right to me, but I think these Wildcats are playing better in the last week than they've played all season. We'll see if we'll see how that goes for the rest of the season. Yeah, I think we talked and we talked to Coach Carlson. He had mentioned uh, another Laval with another big save for the Wildcats. Rebound in front. And the Cats are able to knock that one out of harm's way. But Coach Carlson was saying that South St. Paul tournament might have been a wake-up call over the uh, between Christmas and New Year's. Cats won one game and then just did not play well in the next two. We really kind of had to look in the mirror a little bit and see what they're all about. And right now they got to like what they're seeing, even though they're down two to one in this game. But as you said, they've been playing much, much better. They have been, and that South St. Paul tournament was a bit of a wake-up call. What they real, I think the Cats realized quite candidly is that they can't play one good period of hockey. You know, in, in both of the games they lost, you know, the semifinal game and the third place game, they played some good hockey. It's not like they went out and completely, you know, just absolutely. Um, you know, what the bet or anything, right? It's, it's, they played good hockey, but they didn't play 51 minutes of good hockey, and that's what you have to have. Oh, that puck did just come out before Toll was able to control it. Yeah, that's something that else that Kron's gotten really good at. He's, that one did not get, did get snagged by Toll at the, at the blue line, but Kron, when he wins that face off, one of those forwards better be racing down the, down the ice because he's good at that outlet pass. Morgan Heim, number 10 on the ice for Rosemont right now. He's out there with Retka, number 9. Rozak, number 12. I don't know if we've called Heim's name yet tonight, number 10. He's got the puck right now. Send it in. Off the stick. Prawn to regroup for the Wildcats. On the board. A little too far for Barbado. Heim keeps it in for the Rosemont Irish. Cats ringing around far side. That was Martin. And can the puck get out? Nice leaping play on that far side. But here comes Kron and the Wildcats. 
Got Olsen coming down the middle. Kron's going to go in deep. Backhand in front. And Olsen, Olsen hits the pipe. The puck is out at the slot. Student section and Egan wanting a call. Well, somebody Officials disagreeing. Well, watch the replay here, but Kron takes it around. Nicely done. Leighton Olsen realizes, hey, the best place to be is in the front of the slot because Kron likes to throw it there. I think, I'm not sure if Olsen got tripped there or not. But he absolutely, something, he has, his skates hit something. Yeah, it looks like Redka kind of pushes him, and it looks like he might have kind of bounced off another Rosemont player. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a penalty there no. necessarily, but you can understand why the student section was wondering with just a just cause why there might might have been. Again, we are penalty free with 12.39 to go here in this second period. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make a prediction, Mike Cook. I don't think we're gonna stay that way. <laughs> no. Cats might have got away with an offside there. And it's going to come out. Here comes the Irish. They've got some wheels. Long shot. And the Valley. Oh, I never got through to him. <laughs> he goes in the Murray. Got it in his gear somewhere. There it is. I have to say that is one of the more novel ways I've ever seen of blocking a shot. <laughs> Congratulations, Lance Murray. I'll take a look. We're going to have the replay it's for you. It's going to go right up. And fortunately, didn't go up too far, I don't think. That could be a, a bit of a sticky situation if it did. If you notice, he was covering up pretty good there for that I, uh, shot. And think, wisely uh, yeah, covering up. Coach Munoz and Coach Carlson are having a little chuckle on the bench. That's, that's, <laughs> that's funny stuff. You play the game of hockey long enough, you're going to see stuff like that, right? right? Yeah, Kron dumps it out. Should be a nice on the Wildcats. And it is, by the way. Shot so far, uh, one apiece as we're nearly five minutes into this second period. Nice evenly played period of hockey thus far. Faceoff will be, I believe, to the, oh, they're going to say it's going to be the left of Trigla Valley. Rowan Phillips, Cam Roth, Eddie Moore. Eddie Moore, Eddie Moore making his first appearance, I think, yeah. if I'm yeah, not mistaken. I believe it is. Well, I think he was going to play a couple of JV periods and then play a couple of varsity, if I remember correctly. Here's Barbado leading the rush from his blue line. In with Murray. Ron back at the point. Puck is the taking puck. some weird bounces right off, the, off these boards. And Rosemond with some wheels. Campbell. Campbell backhand. He tries to leave it for his man. Intercepted that time by Moore for the Wildcats. Roth going to give chase, but it's going to be Peterson, first man there. Number seven for the Mason Blue. Is it really Mason Blue or is it really yellow? I don't know. It sounded good. You got the, you got the Michigan look going. By the way. Cats, can they dump it out? They can. Yep. Tripping over his own skates with Barbado. Olsen shot. He gives up the big rebound that time was Posh, but Rosemont's going to turn and go. Nice check that time behind the play by the Wildcats. That was Martin. Here's Barbado. Stop, spin. Martin, Olsen. Olsen one on two. We got a first penalty of the game. We do, I think. Well, we no, no, the net is off. Well, we sure should. Yeah, I'm the not net sure. is off. That was the whistle. I'm not sure. I, I, in the student section for Regan, I think they've got a point here. Watch Olsen as he gets this puck. That's absolutely a trip or a hook with a stick. I think, you know, the Wildcats aren't going to cry too much about this, but watch. I mean, I'm trying to pick up what number that is. It's number nine. It's Retka. I mean, that's absolutely a hook or a, or a trip. One of the two. Wildcats aggrieved on that one <laughs> and the faceoff comes out of the zone oh yeah du doubly fun we made a two to one hockey game in favor of the Irish just under 11 to go here in the middle frame here's Lockenmeyer for the Wildcats out there with 21 Goyle Bly Murray shot through traffic nope that was hit deflected on the way through and there's another big hit and that was no, absolutely no a hit from behind. No call either. That's a hit from behind. I mean, the referees are going to start to lose control of this game, Mike Cook. They're going to start to lose control of this game. Someone's going to get hurt because they swallowed the whistles. Rosemont opportunity goal! That was absolutely a hit from behind. That's ridiculous. Watch this hit from behind. Lockemeyer has got his back to him. He's pushed over into the boards. It can't get any more clear than that. Yeah. Toll, Toll does the business, and then the Irish come down and score. 
And it's three on this time it's Haggerty with the goal that'll be his second of the night. Talk about a momentum shift in a matter of seconds. Well that time I think I, I it's hard to pick that up but I think I think uh, LaValle wants won that one but definitely would yeah. like that one back. Carson Lieber with the lone assist on the Rosemont goal. And it's 3-1 Irish. A play that, yes, Egan fans can say was set up by a non-call. Here's Cron. Long shot. That would hit traffic on the way through. But give Rosemont credit. They played right through it, went right down and scored. Here they come again on the rush. And couldn't quite control the puck that time with Sable. And come the Wildcats the other way. Roth won on about five. He's he and Heim go into the corner. Nine and a half to go, middle frame. Three one Irish. Tiger's hey, got a couple tonight for Rosemont. Murray his hand misplays the puck. Stop, spin. And that shot was Murray. He got a piece of that one off of Hansen's shot. He's Roth, he'll dump it in. He's gonna get off for a change. He needed that. He was gassed out there. But we're in deep with Peterson. Rosemont controls behind the net. Hendrickson. Turnover. Olsen. Olsen down low. Nice job by Peterson to keep Olsen to the outside. Here's Hansen for the Wildcats. Or Martin checked that for the Wildcats. Wedward. Back out. Peek away out. That hit traffic on the way through. Rosemont coming the other way. Opportunity. Irish. No. Couldn't quite get there that time. That was Campbell with the breakaway. Another big hit behind the play. We and we're now halfway through regulation. It's 3-1 Rosemount. All the way down should be an ice, and indeed it is. Let's take a look at that last opportunity. Nice job by Trigg. Yeah, Lavalle did a nice job staying with him, staying with Campbell all the way through that, not giving Campbell. He waited to the last second to do anything. Campbell really, he didn't tip his hand what he was doing, and he really waited out Campbell on that one. Nicely done by LaValle. I know Coach Carlson, I saw him talking to the referees, very unhappy about that failure to call the hit from behind on Lockenmeyer. And like I said, Mike, I'm worried that the, that the players are gonna start policing the game themselves because the referees clearly are not. Absolutely. Well, you saw a couple of big hits here just before this last faceoff down in the Eakin zone as well. These guys are hitting. Well, and, and clean, clean checks are, 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 are going to be a bit of a challenge, but a hit from behind into the boards—I right. mean, that's right. that's not a that's not a well, one. It's dangerous. Opportunity, Haggerty, high up into the netting. I mean, to be honest with you, I think at some point the, the Wildcats are going to say, "Fine, if you're not going to call that stuff, then we're going to do it too." Yeah. And and that's when someone's going to get hurt um, or your Wildcats are going to beat themselves by taking penalties. Right. Still 3-1 game. You know, it's Absolutely. not, it's, you know, shots are 12-9. to 9. It's not like they're getting blown out here. The Wildcats have just got to calm down and play their game. By the way, shots this period, four for the Irish, two for Egan. With nine minutes elapsed in this period, just over nine minutes. Roth in deep. Couldn't quite get there for the Wildcats. And Rosemont. There's a big hit. No arms in the air. We shall play on. Opportunity Irish. Another shot. And up into the netting. Well, that's a big hit at the center ice or near center ice. Yep. Coming out of the zone. Coming out of the zone. Rutgers got his head down. Kron steps into him and lays him out. That's a tough physics lesson there for Rutka. Clean hit. Yep, you know, absolutely. it's not, not not you know not really even that dangerous, just a nice solid hockey play. Again, that's why you don't have your head down. And we've got a Rosemont player down back in the faceoff dot. I did not see what happened. It was the it was, it was the player that took the faceoff. And I'm trying to Is figure that out exactly what happened. I couldn't tell. Nope, 34. 34. Hansen. That's Hansen. Uh no. I don't well, no, the see. bottom of your screen, Campbell going down. You're tangled up there with. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I'd have to go yeah. back and look. I thought it was the guy in the faceoff. And he's down there behind a couple of his teammates on the bench. 
Hopefully nothing serious. Yeah, hopefully not. Interesting, the officials are talking now. Kind of just in the neutral zone, not too far in front of the penalty box. Just yeah, there you are. No, and that's, on that shot, and, that's, so. and that's what the officials should do. They should talk and confirm, make sure nobody saw anything. They can only call what they see, right. not what they think happened. And to be honest with you, I'm not even sure what happened there. Maybe a maybe a cross check, maybe a, a slash. I don't know, but in any event, you know they're not going to call anything. Of course, Wild fans would say, you yeah, know, you know, even in the NHL, sometimes they call even though they couldn't see it. Think about. That goal yesterday in Colorado. No. But yeah. There's Rosemont poking that one as we get back to South Suburban Conference play. Ten minutes gone by in this period. Rosemont with a long goal this frame. Three-one lead for the Irish. Nice job there by the wild wild forwards, <laughs> the wild cat forwards, coming down to take away that slot. Durgan was in the slot, kind of not by himself, but he was being watched. Both by Olsen and Wedward. Nicely done. I'm not sure why the Wildcats are not paying attention here. They've got to understand they've got to hustle back with this buck. Yeah, Wildcats kind of look. Pika, it's kind of just yeah, kind of going through the motions here though, since that last faceoff. Yeah, Pika and Murray both. Pika and Murray both watched that puck just go by and neither one of them did anything to it. Wedward tries to poke it out, does. And Cats are going to change up a couple of players. Here's Murray one on two. Couldn't quite get around. Nice defensive play by the Rosemont D. And here come the Irish. This is Redka, Zach Redka. Odd angle shot kept aside. That time by LaValle. Rosemont changed up a couple of guys. Nearly got a puck, nearly hit Hendrickson going off. Most likely it would have been a too many men, but yeah, smart by not. Here we go. Opportunity. Redka. Oh, over the top of the cage. Zach Redka, golden opportunity to make it four to one. Slashing Redka, slashing Pika behind the play again. No call. Now there's a whistle because they are offsides. Offsides, They're offsides. again. No call. Slashes behind the play. Watch. See if we can pick this up. Maybe if our camera lingers. First of all, Redka completely misses, which obviously you can't do. Pika does put him down, and I'm sure Redka say, "Hey, wait! Didn't you hit me from behind?" You did. The camera pans away, but there's slashes from Redka on Pika. Game's getting out of hand. These referees are gonna. The referees are going to hear about it from everybody if they don't start getting control of the hockey game. Again, yeah, last thing we want to see is anybody get hurt out there. Wildcats able to clear it out. Poked ahead that time. Phillips to Roth. Phillips gets it back. Intercepted that time by Rosemount. That was Liebert backhands it around. And full head of steam this time is Toll coming through. Centered it across that time. Back to Hanson, he didn't get a good shot off. He said it's going to be Lewis playing it down near the corner. He's battling in there. I believe that's Goyle with him. A little two on two action. With the, with the Wildcat forwards playing in the slot, playing a little lower. The points are more open for the Irish. Let's see if they make an adjustment for it. Correction, that's Barbado in there. 22 for the Wildcats. And Moore just took a shot in the back from Lewis. And we've got a whistle. And we're finally going to have our first penalty of the night, Mike Cook. Let's see who they call it on. Is it going to be Lewis? I'm not sure. It's going to be Lewis cross-checking. Cross yep. Yeah, they got him. So number 14, Isaac Lewis, first infraction of the night. You know, I like when the referees let him play in the corner like that. Um, but... And for Rosemont, just the frustration might have got the better of that young man. And opportunity for the Cats. First power play of the night. Big opportunity here for the Wildcats. Here's Barbado. Shot. Easy glove save there by Posh. Wildcat power play. 19.6% on the season. Irish penalty kill. Just a shade under 74%. Well, kind of creeping in. Here's Barbado to the far side. Lockemeyer up top. Here's Barbado. Long shot through. That goes just wide. Cron down low for the Wildcat. And no, couldn't quite get it. I'm not sure that went right through the crease off of Goyle. And Rosemont was able to knock that one out. Whoop. Barbado with a whiff. They go to the aggressive four check for the Irish. And Cats can't get it out of their own zone. That's Headland this time. Wraparound attempt. The Valley down. 
Somehow that puck stays out of the Eagles net. Sloppy play by the Wildcats. Under 114 to go in the man advantage for the home team. Cross going to give chase. Lockenmeyer is going to get there first. Here comes Rosemount the other way. Two on one if they hurry. Coming down that. That's Peterson down low. In front. Backhand. Give. Go. Goal. Hendrickson with the beauty. Uh, it was an absolute beauty. It's a shorthanded goal for the Rosemont Irish. Still a minute to go on the penalty. Wildcat power play. Hate to say it, but looked completely clueless there. I mean, I'm not sure what, what, what was going through anybody's mind in terms of how to get that puck into the zone. But nicely done that time by Heim. Yep, I put it away. Yep, it was Logan Heim, number 10, not 11, Hendrickson. So. And the assist is going to go to number 12, Rock, uh, Rosick. So it's going to be high from Rosick, short-handed, and it's 4-1, Rosemount. I mean, there was a puck, an opportunity to get by one pass, or to bypass earlier in that power play, and if, if you know, the Wildcats missed that opportunity, and now they give up a short-handed goal, and now they've got a mountain to climb. Back Absolutely. Well, they still have 30 seconds on this power play. Leading the rush in that time is number 12, Henry Martin. He's going to go low. Tries to get Wedward in front. Intercepted that time by Toll. And did Pika keep it in? He did just at the blue line. Nice job poking in that time to keep it in was Martin again. But couldn't do it that time. And inside 10 to go in the man advantage for the Wildcats. And I think that Egan power play was just trying to be too fancy, Mike. They were trying to be too fancy or too coy or too something. Just make, just make, it, make it basic. Wedward swings it wide, tries to come in. Nice intercept by Toll for Rosemount. High off the glass and out. Carlson for the Irish. Shot and Shrake with the big glove save. Well, and a three goal lead here in the second period, the Irish can, I don't want to say sit back, but they can afford to be a little more conservative, a little more dump and chase, a little more, you know, safe shot, safe passes. They don't have to press nearly as much as if it was even a 3 1 game or a 2 1 game. Shots right now 7-4 this period in favor of the Irish. 15-11 overall. There's more for the Wildcats. There's Jensen out there this time as well, big number 28. Long shot, that was deflected wide. Shot came to and looking for a penalty on Barbado. They're not going to get one. Probably should have been called. And here comes Egan dumping it back in across the blue line. Cats are offsides, however. Yeah, I, li I like the heads up play by, by Kron trying to play the puck because it was just a bit of a hesitation by the referee. I'm not sure if the whistle jammed or not, but you can say I've never said that before. The whistle <laughs> jammed or not, but Wildcats looking a little bit shell shocked here with two minutes to go here and change to go here in the second period. They've got to get something going here offensively. Face off just outside the Rosemont zone. Quick shot up high over the cage. Murray on the and then the tip. Nice opportunity that time by Goyle. Set it up nicely, but Posh right there for the Irish. Yeah, I, li I like Murray putting it in towards the net from the point. Watch him. He's going to be in your living room. He's going to fire it here. There's going to be a tip. Looks like it actually came off of Headland, and then Goyle was able to somehow get a stick to it as well. 2:01 to go here in this middle period. Rosemont's got two goals in this stretch. Takes that four to one lead. Wildcats really need to get one here before the period expires. Peterson for Rosemont. Try to get the long outlet pass. Hagerty. Can he split the D? No, nice job. Pika to keep Hagerty to the outside. Hagerty's got two already tonight. Rosemont Peterson way out. Never had a chance. Big rebound out front though. And Katz able to poke it out of harm's way. Posh came out. Peterson gets it. Peterson will leave it for, I believe this is Toll. Murray keeps it in for the Wildcats. Here comes Rose, not another opportunity. They do stay outside. That time it's Hendrickson from way out. One minute to go in this period. Castle gassed out there right now. 
Yeah, like I said, shell shock, right? That I mean, might they, be a better for me to put they it. Look like, they look like they're just they're, you know, trying too hard or not trying hard enough not or, enough, or, no. or just, you no, know, it's just not working for them right no. now. They are off kilter for sure. I mean, they're going to be fortunate Rosemont doesn't get one here in the last 36 seconds. Wildcats in the next 36 seconds need to do two things. Number one, not allow another goal. Number two, get just a tiny bit of momentum, a big hit, uh, a scoring opportunity on Pash, something in the next 36 seconds. Going out with Pash, tried to spring Wedward. They do, Wedward opportunity. Wedward backhand, nice stop by Pash. Nearly exactly what the Cats needed. Kept in that time, Barbado. Barbado gets it back. That shot hit traffic on the way through. Olsen in deep. Barbado way out. That was deflected. I'm not sure Pasha ever saw that until it whizzed past his head. Barbado, another quick opportunity. Can he get the shot off? Looking for the tip. And Rosemont's going to get out of this period with a 4-1 to one lead. Good pressure in the last 30 seconds by the Wildcats. Here's Wedward of that opportunity. Wedward's looking for a, to get it onto his backhand. Nice left pad there by Posh. I don't know, I mean, I, I'd like to see Wedward just shoot it and, and hope, hope Posh gives up a rebound. Shoot low and hard, and if Posh gives up a rebound, then, then try to look for that opportunity. But, you know, hey, he scored more goals tonight than I have, so <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to question number 10. Shots that period. Egan had six, Rosemont had eight. We're going to take ourselves a break. We're going to be coming back with third period action on ATV with your Wildcats down by a four to one count. Great to be a part of Egan history, something that all three of us are very proud of. The population of Egan is 51% female, so we've worked hard to get our department to reflect the population that we're serving. The foundation of the Egan Fire Department has been laid by many great men and women, and we have been welcomed here with open arms, very supportive. You have that family aspect with your crew. We eat dinner together and we respond to calls together, and really it's just the best job there is. I encourage all females to pursue a career that they're passionate about, regardless if it's historically been male-dominated, and that it is achievable. Give it a try, see if you're passionate about it, and if you are, you'll succeed. Our dedicated team of 24 utility staff works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year to make sure that we deliver our almost three billion gallons of water to you, the residents and commercial businesses inside the city of Egan. We are always investing and innovating to assure you, the public, get good, clean, quality water at a top value.
is our comprehensive approach to ensure a successful future for us all. I was more than happy to participate in it, actually being a former student athlete here at the high school. The ladder is an acronym, uh, leadership, accountability, determination, discipline, empower, and resiliency. It's make sure you do your part, make sure you do your thing, make sure you get one step at a time and make sure you do your stuff, but at the same time, you gotta bring people up on the ladder with you. Being able to do a photo with the fire truck, uh, especially with the ladder and climb the ladder with it was, uh, was pretty fun. It's really nice as a football player to know that you have a community behind your back and uh, that you have people there to support you. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Susanna. We're going to talk to you about on ice and off ice safety. friends, we're going to talk a little bit about safety today before we get on the ice. One of the first things to look for is down at your feet. It's really important to make sure that you don't have laces that are hanging. You can either tuck them into your socks or into a pair of tight pants. That's so much better. The next thing that I want to talk about is keeping our heads safe. I recommend whether you're 2 or 62, if this is your first time skating or your first time taking classes, that you wear a helmet. You can bring a bike helmet from home or you can rent one here at the rink. It'll look just like this. I feel ready to get out on the ice now. How about you? I'm so excited to step out on the ice with you guys, but we have to talk about one more thing first so that we can be really safe. That's falling down and getting up safely. When I feel like I'm going to fall backwards, I bend forward, my knees bent, my arms out in front of me, and leaning forward. That's gonna keep me from falling backwards. If I'm still gonna fall, I'm gonna try to go down safely to one side. That's the easiest way to do it. When I'm ready to get up, I'll put my hands and knees on the ice, put one foot up first, but keep my hands firmly on the ground. Put the other foot up, and then stand up slowly. If my feet are stuck apart, I can walk them in. I feel ready to get on the ice now. Let's go. We have to remember to watch our step, and we also want to look left and right before we get on, just like when we're crossing traffic. Whoa! That was Coach Susanna. Let's hear some more from her. Hi there. I heard you are all ready to get on the ice. We're gonna start off with our safety pose again because as you can see, we're on the ice and now it's really slippery. We're gonna go over our safety pose one more time. Knees are bent, hands are out in front of me and I'm leaning forward just a little bit so I don't fall backwards. When I fall, I fall onto my side if I can. I get on my hands and knees, one foot goes up, then the other, and I keep my hands on the ice until I feel safe enough to stand all the way up. A few more things to keep you safe. Skates are really sharp, so let's try not to kick when we're on the ice. When you do fall down, let's try and get up as fast as we can and do so in a safe way. If you're ever in a lesson, it's really important that you are always listening to your teacher. 
and a really good way to show that is your feet are nice and quiet. The other thing we want you to make sure that you do is to take your time. Whether it's new or old skills, just for your safety and your friend's safety, we wanna make sure that you're going nice and slow so no one gets hurt. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. We wanted a space where someone could bring a family member or a friend or a neighbor and not have to worry about any exclusion. This park can adapt to all different people uh, regardless of what their abilities are. On an average playground, I'll just be on the sidelines, be like, yay, yay, you did it. But now I get to be like, come on, let's go play all together and it's pretty amazing. We know that inclusive play teaches important life skills like cooperation, empathy, and leadership. And it helps build relationships and community around those same values. Come to this park because you're going to have an awesome time. It's inclusive for everyone. There's lots of things to do for both young ones and older ones. To Sophia and Gabriel, even though these old knees can't follow on your adventure to the forest today, these flowers represent my love. These stitches and threads join us together. And wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Welcome back inside the Egan Civic Arena. As you look at the Wildcat logo and there might be some ferociousness there, but that was not a good period on the ice ferociously for the Wildcats as they now trail by a four to one count heading to the third period against the Rosemont Irish. By the way, just a reminder, you saw that PSA again about mental health and Saturday seven o'clock here against Eastview Mental Health Awareness Night. Uh, T-shirts will be available for sale. And they are selling them at school on the Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Uh, proceeds, half of them go into the Jordan Clark Foundation and the other half go into the Coaches Association and they're helping to raise some funds for some underserved areas where uh, you know, mental health assistance is not always as readily available. As you look at the, the student section, 
looking to get something going there from their team or from their classmates today. We know that place will be rocking on Saturday night with the Eastview Lightning here. Again, Eastview played them early in this year. Tough loss down at their place. But Eastview five and four in conference play coming into this one. Wildcats three and three, respectively fifth and sixth in conference play. And the Roseman Irish, they are seven and oh here in South Suburban Conference play. Eight and five overall. Hey, just a reminder, ETV, we do far more than just boys hockey. There's girls hockey, there's both basketballs, gymnastics, wrestling, swimming. And be sure to check it out for what games are coming up. All kinds of games. You can visit egan-tv.com slash sports for the full schedule. As you look at the Rosemont Irish coming onto the ice, they've got a four to one lead looking to win for the fifth time in six outings. Eight and five overall, and as we said, they lead the South Suburban Conference. Seven and zero record, half a game up on Lakeville North. And Rosemont fans, you've got Lakeville North twice in a span of three days on the 25th and the 27th of this month. I'm sure that's some uh, COVID makeup action in there. And of course, Wildcat fans, you've got Lakeville South uh, COVID games coming up. To, uh, February 10th is now the game at Lakeville South. It's gonna be a five o'clock start, by the way. Down at Hasi Arena, make up for that game a couple of weeks ago that was lost due to that C word. This will be Todd Carlson and the Eagan Wildcats. Looking to get out to a quick start this period. So trailing by three. Wedward, the lone goal thus far for the Eagan Wildcats. Hegarty's got two for the Rosemont Irish. That's Caden Hegarty. Caden Campbell's got one. And also one to Logan Heim. Again, Nathan Cron joining me here, Mike Cook with you. And Nathan, we were just kind of talking between periods. Cats have got to come out quick. They've got to come out quick and they've got to make something tally. I mean, you know, it's it's they had a little flurry there at the end of the period. That's that's okay. I'm I'm, I'm not saying that's irrelevant, but at some point you gotta make it tally, you gotta make it count. There has to be quickness and urgency. There can't be waiting for the perfect shot. Everything's gotta to go to the net, and they've gotta crash for rebounds. Cron in deep for the Wildcats. Actually, well, actually, hit it back. That was Cron that got it back out at the point. Pika's going to give chase. Aggressive play that time by the Rosemont Irish. That was Dugan in deep. Or, uh, Duncan, I should say, for the uh, Rosemont Irish. And can the uh, Rosemont keep it in? This is Peterson. Sends it far side. Dot center. Couldn't quite connect over that time by a. Uh, for the Rosemont Irish. Cats can't quite get it out of their own end, but now they do, but not exactly what, where you wanted to be. I mean, you wanted to see a little more continuity here for the Wildcats. Peterson knocked down by his own man, Minnick on by here in this frame. And here comes Phillips. He's been out since the get-go here. He's gonna head for a line change, and it's gonna be icing against the Wildcats. Face off back to the left of Trigla Valley. 12 saves thus far. About four goals, but he hadn't had a lot of help on a couple of them. Yeah, I would say at least at least a couple of them were just basically he's at the mercy of the of the Rosemont Irish. I think that third goal is probably one he probably won it back. I couldn't quite see where the angle was, but these Wildcats are gonna put in a good shift in front of them here in the third period. The question is, can they can they offensively do anything here against the Irish? Wedward gonna give chase as he flips it ahead to himself. A spin move by Wedward, number 10 in white. Up there with Leighton Olsen, number 19. Also out in that line is 12, Henry Martin. I'll see if Rosemont continues to be aggressive into the zone. Did a really nice job of hustling. And that goes just wide of the cage. Aggressive on their four check, really forcing the Cats to play that puck right away. Yeah, the Rosemont Irish are doing something the Cats are doing as well. I wish the Cats would do more, and that is as soon as the puck's on their stick, they're shooting from the point or shooting from the slot or shooting from anywhere. It doesn't matter. They're just putting shots on Lavalley, and that's that's what the Wildcats need to be doing. And Ganser tried to center it to Hansen, couldn't connect. Good defensive play that time by the Wildcats. Again, though, two on four, and Rosemont is winning those battles. 
Great get there behind the play. Long shot going for the tip that time. That was Sable. He was looking for a deflection all the way. Can the Wildcats finally get it out? They do, and it's going to be on an ice. Try it. Goyle tried to hit Gly, and they just flat out missed him. By the way, I want to quick mention uh, JV action before this one. Rosemont Iris three, Egan Wildcats one. Shots 26-15 though in favor of the Wildcats. But uh, so Jack Schneider and the Egan goalie had a couple of them he really had no chance on. And Rosemont gets out of here with a 3-1 win. Hands it out. No icing that time. Good call by the officials as Rosemont had an opportunity to play that puck and it went through Burt Redka. There are two Redkas. There's Burke is number 20 and Zach is number nine. Here's Wedward. Way up, Cron. Not sure Posh ever saw that one, but it went wide of the cage. And the Irish going to get something out of the zone. Up, oh, going to go out and backhand it across, across the blue. Sable just dumps it down. Nope, they're going to wave off the icing. As Cron gives chase. Hegarty back there in blue. Here's Hedlund, 26 in blue. Pine sends it back. Shot Hendrickson way out. Easy save for LaValle. Three and a half gone by. Yeah, easy save. LaValle is a, a nice phrase. You know, I hope we get to use it a little bit more here as, as you see this. But watch, you know, Moore's getting... <laughs> I, I, I don't know what the referees are looking at. Eddie Moore just looked like he got... I don't know if it was... Maybe they're going to say that Eddie you know, picked up the guy's stick and put it on his shoulder and then carried it away, but I don't get it. Roth with an opportunity for the Cats. Peterson will battle behind the goal line. Phillips tries to leave, or check that. That was, it was a Jetson for the Wildcat, or Olsen, I mean. I'm all confused now. Jensen, Olsen, Peyton, yeah, I, yeah. It's, bottom line is it's going to be a face-off back in the Irish zone. Well, every once in a while, you know, the rest of us, the rest of us just kind of get tongue-tied, you know? I mean, we're not all professionals like like Mike Cook. Yeah, I want to give you, Nathan Cron credit. You called the game here on Saturday to rave reviews, I've been told. I don't know who was raving, but I think we're probably ranting and raving. Here comes Rosebond. Oh, trying to get it into the Wildcats zone. Castle going to come the other way with Murray. In Phillips are battling at center, but yet it's Irish coming away with a Ganser. Still gets a Peterson circle. The Valley hangs on. Especially last week, and I want to give a quick shout out, by the way, because well, because I can. He can ban them B2. They won the new Richmond tournament over the weekend. Routed a couple of teams early, and then held on to beat Forest Lake three to two in the final on Sunday. Game-winning goal, by the way, William Mitchell. Egan was two men down on the kill. Mitchell goes oh. in, gets the winner. Evan Mongo Cook got one, and so did Tristan Gutierrez has four to be two. Gideon Brady, big night in the pipes. Well, looks like this one's going to come out of the zone here for the for the Wildcats. Irish, though, doing what they need to do right now in terms of keeping the puck down in the Wildcat end. Virtually impossible to score if you can't get it into the offensive zone. The Cats yet to have a shot on goal this period. Rosemont has a couple. 4.15 elapsed. And again, play stays down in the Wildcat zone. Opportunity was knocked down in front. Good play by the Wildcat D. That was Pika. Here comes Goyle the other way. Give and go. Goyle couldn't quite get back there, thinking to get maybe a tip from Lockenmeyer. Lockenmeyer, he'll keep a shot in traffic. And Rosemont defender gets in the way, and they're going to poke it out. I believe that's Sable. Irish two on one potential. And tip in front. Well, the Valley man had to make another save. Liebert hustling down number five from his defensive spot. And the Valley wisely hanging on. Someone needs to tell Lockenmeyer they need to communicate better on the ice. Lockenmeyer, watch this after the after the shot here. Puck comes out to the side. Lockenmeyer had a player break it up the ice right behind him. And they've got to, he's got to tell Aunt Alex that he's there. So that way he can, Alex can flip it to him. Sable from way up. That was deflected on the way through. The Valley's down, sprawled. Puck is still in there somewhere. Opportunity blast. Oh, knocked down nicely by Wedward. That one's got to hurt. And finally able to poke it out that time was Henry Martin. 
Barbado. That's trying to get something set up. Absolute nasty turnover. Hagerty hits the outside of the pipe. He was looking for the Hattie. Wildcats have got to close down space. Nice block by Olsen. But they've got to close down these shooters. Close down the Irish. They're not doing that right now at all. Too much space. Tried to get Wedward, but couldn't get it through four Rosemont players to get to him. Puck does come out of the zone, however. But it's right back in. I will keep it in for the Irish. No, he can't. As Wedward, number 10, goes the other way. Now Wedward's going to head off. Cats making a change behind the play. Just over 11 minutes to go in regulation on this one. 4-3 for the Rosemont Irish. Looking to improve to 8-0 in South Suburban Conference play. Down low, Phillips. He had a couple of goals last time out for the Wildcats. Pika across. Right to center it across to Phillips. I think Barbados should have maybe shot at the net on that one. Extended pressure here by the Wildcats, Mike. Just what the doctor ordered. Moore gets knocked down from behind. Into the corner. Rosemont tries to ring it around far side. Cron will be there for the Wildcats. Wisely dumps it back into Phillips down low. Phillips looking, looking. He goes back. Will he go back to Pika? Nope, he'll send it back around down low. This is Roth for the Wildcats. Good sustained pressure for the Eagan Wildcats. We're actually going to change up a couple of players on this aggressive four check. Nice job by the Wildcat offense that time, but the puck does come all the way down finally. There's one hustling in that time. That was Lewis coming down the left side. Around inside 10 to go. Back out Hendrickson from the Wildcat bench. Just wide and we'll have a face off. Some, some life here for the Wildcats, Mike. I mean, ex some extended pressure here by the Wildcats in the Irish zone. Certainly what you want to see if you're gonna if you're gonna climb back into this game. You know, it's a three-goal lead, and you're gonna start running out of, of time here, a little less than 10 minutes to go. You basically have three three-minute chunks. You gotta, you gotta get a goal every three minutes here, and the Wildcats have got a tall order. They can they can get goals, but they gotta do it quick. Blackemeyer's gonna poke it in. Goyle gonna or Gly gonna give Chase 27. Puck comes right back out. Here's Rosemont potential. Two on one. Cron back. Slides across. And LaValle kicks that one aside. I think it was going to go wide anyway. But again, an opportunity for the Rosemont Irish to go up 5-1. And a nice job, though, by Cron to get in the way. Puck thrown back out in the middle. Here comes the eek in the other way. The white sweatered Wildcats. Fly going to head in. Shadowed by Peterson. Lewis for Rosemont. Here's Durgan, Peterson, Ganser. Way too many uninterrupted passes there for the Wildcats to permit. Off the board, kept in that time by the Rosemont Irish. Briefly, finally poked out. Cats are going to change. Looks like three behind the play, or two behind the play. Big hit back there. We approach the halfway point here, period number three. Irish opportunity. And Laval with another save. Oh, nearly get knocking that one in on the rebound that time was Hedlund. Two good opportunities for Hans Hedlund. But we remain a 4 to 1 hockey game. Rudrick tries to go around his man, unable to do so. Rosemont, can they poke it back out? They do, but it's Barbado for the Wildcats. Rosemont just methodically setting things up in their own zone. Off the stick of Haggerty, going to force Barbado in deep for Egan to regroup. Murray. Eight minutes to go in regulation. Barbado didn't get anything going that time. And here comes Rosemont and Haggerty. He's been out there a long time this shift. Comes to the front, tries to go short side on the valley. And that should be an ice on the Wildcats, and indeed. It is. 7.41 to go. Oh, shots this period. Rosemont has eight. Egan's still looking for their first. Yeah, that's that's not going to get it done. The first almost 10 minutes of this period gone. Egan needing goals. Has to get shots before they can get goals. And right now, just not doing that. They've got to sh I mean, let's face it. If you're Egan, as soon as you're over the blue line, it's a shot on net and crash for rebound. No more puck handling, no more dangling. It's a shot and a crash for a rebound. It has to be. And that's absolutely should be offsides too, but what, what do I know? 
No spot to regroup. Nice intercept that time by Lockemeyer. Couldn't quite control it, however. There's a big little extracurricular activity right in front of the penalty box. He got just one penalty so far this game, and that was on the Rosemont Irish back in the second period. Rosemont student section like that. Cutting in front. Had to go short side on the valley. Get that Egan defense just flat footed. There's Pika taking his man out in the corner. One on two. But it feels like Rosemont's got more than five guys out there right now, but they only have five. Lavella couldn't get, did get a glove on that one high in the cage, though. And Lockemeyer's going to poke it down. Cats are going to change everybody wisely. Got some tired Egan players out there. A big hit right at the blue line. There's Henry Martin. Who else coming through with the big hit? A nice hit by Martin. And here comes Hanson. Backhand is turns across. Gold, but he's there wearing blue. Jar Carlson just a hair late coming down the slot. And well, our second penalty of the game on the Rosemont Irish. It's going to be Ganser. And I assume they're going to get him on a trip. Yep, it is indeed a trip. Time of that one, 10 43. Cass got to get one on the power play. Yeah, if there was ever a time you have to get one on the power play, it's right here. Murray says, All right, I got some open ice in front of me. I'm going to go. And it's a little tap to the side of the skate, and down goes Murray. That's a. That's, that's that's a call, you know. I mean, it's not exactly the most egregious. It's not the most egregious penalty we've seen all night, but it's uh, you know it, it is what it is. So get answer there in the penalty box. Another one of the sophomores on this team, coached by Rick Sandy. So I'm trying. To, oh, Rosemont got one shorthanded back in that second period. Trying to figure out why the Wildcats were backing away from that. It's, they need to be more aggressive. Pika ridden out of the play, trying to go in deep. And out and around. The Cats have wasted 30 seconds of this power play. Too far for Wedward. Puck does squirt back out across the blue line. Cats do need to get on sides. Here comes Olsen. Wedward and Pika within about arm's length as they went into the zone. Here's Roth. Roth, stop, back to the point. They have tried to get a shot off, blocked by Rosemont. Quick turn, Olsen! Whistle it just wide. Good shot by Olsen. It's got to hit the frame, but I like the I like the attempt. Cats opportunity. And they finally get a shot on goal this period. And Posh is there to make the big save for Rosemont. Well, Posh is, he hasn't had a whole lot to do here in the third period, but I, I, I like this play here. I think that's Phillips. No, check that, that's Olsen with the hit. Creates the opportunity. I think that's Phillips there. It's not a great angle, but it's smart play. Every shot has got to be on frame. Every time you have the puck in a position to shoot, you got to shoot it through the Wildcats. Just under a minute to go in the man advantage for the Eagle Wildcats. All the way down. And Val's going to leave that for Barbado, which Todd Carlson keeps the same five Wildcats out. Around the hit that time was Glide. What loop? Puck is lost in the Rosemont zone. And good hustle that time. Rozak, first man there for Rosemont. It's Barbado. It's four on three. The Wildcats hurry. They got a four on three, but they didn't hurry. There's Barbado up from his defensive spot. Cats try to get something set up as this power play dwindles. 15 to go. Cron in deep. Lockemeyer help on opportunity. Couldn't get a shot off that time. It was Glide at the side of the cage. Back up top, Barbado from way out. That goes whistling wide. Rosemont Irish now back at full strength. And that one goes wide. Posh might have deflected that one up into the netting with 4 14 to go. Cats had one shot on that power play. Well, there was some semblance of offensive pressure. And I guess if you're looking for positives, that's a positive. But that is not where the Cats needed to be. The Cats needed. A goal there on that power play. They didn't get it. And we're at the point where I don't even think LaValle is going to be pulled out. I don't no. think we're going to be pulling him here. No, I, no. Pika trying to get more on the tip. Like I said, these two teams, they're going to meet again the last game of the regular season. It's the last scheduled game of the regular season. February 19th down at the Rosemont. Community Center. 
three o'clock start for that one. And you know what? They could see each other in the section playoffs as well. And puck is going to go out. Not go out of play, but we do have a whistle. 340 to go. Gonna be interesting when this comes to section play with some of these seedings. And you've got Creek Durham Hall, you've got St. Thomas both having strong seasons. You would think as of right now they'd be the one two. Rosemont's gonna be right up there. You know, there's just there's nothing easy. No. And the Cats are gonna need to get these wins. They need to beat teams that they are below in the standings. This is one of them. Saturday against Eastview will be another one. <laughs> There's my student section like something over in that corner. Murray tries to poke it ahead. Works them just all the way down. Just keep it down in that Wildcat zone. That seems to be the Irish mantra right now. Well, it's smart. It's smart by the Irish, Absolutely. right? It's smart, and it's you know one thing that this period has not devolved into is is a series of penalties and, and dirty hits and things like that. Although you know, Martin just took took what might be an elbow there, but but you know it's it's that's at least I'll say that's positive. The players have have kept their they kept their composure. It was a nice block by Redwood, by the way. It was two and a half to go. Lockenmeyer tried to lay out one of the Irish players coming across the blue line. Yeah, they shoot it back down. Four fresh skaters for the Irish. And this will be an icing. It shall with 2.19 to go. I, I, I don't understand that. I think Franz I think Franz has got a right to be annoyed there because he shot that puck right at a teammate, and the teammate just didn't touch it. And it's like, guys. We don't want to keep giving up icings. You got, you got to get it down the, down the, down the ice. And now we're going to have to see Breck Eisen and Jensen now at the defensive pairings. Hey, why not? Absolutely. Yeah, put some fresh guys out there. Give them a little, you know, very little varsity time. But hey, it's still time. Absolutely. Breck Eisen from way down. Shot was deflected through traffic. Deflected in traffic. Black has enough circle to that. High off the glass. Phillips knocks it down, pokes it out. There's more. Didn't quite control into the Rosemont zone. Phillips heads off. Parker Jensen back on for the Wildcats. 28. Rosemont. Sabo just missed going far side. The back door was open. Yep. Wildcats have got to close it down. I don't care who's on the ice. No more backdoor goals. Puck pops up. Yes, do stay on side. Can't control the puck, but they stayed on side. And once again, Rosemount just going to come flying out of their own zone. Well, notice the difference, though. Rosemount comes flying out of their zone without a whole lot of resistance, and Egan tries to get out of their zone. There's the Rosemount players all over the lanes, all over the. the, the, the the, the middle lane, the side, the two side lanes. I mean, it's 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 noticeable, right? Here comes Riley Paulus for the Wildcats, number seven, his first shift of the night. Let's see if Paulus can get this one up off the board. So, tried to get it ahead to him, a little too far. Here's Rosemont again. Tall shot, the Valley. Hang on, 36 and a half left in this one. Again. Shots this period now nine to one in favor of the Rosemont Irish. Well, Wildcats. If you want to say the Wildcats played played all right in the first period, you want to say that they played, you know, not great in the second period. This third period, it's not like they played early, but when you're down by three goals, you can't. This isn't good enough. And right now, the Wildcats are going to have some. They have some questions about, hey, how are we going to regroup and come back? We've got our second meeting with Eastview, which I can tell you for these players is as big a rivalry as this rivalry is. And, and you know, what, what are the Wildcats going to do to bounce back for this Saturday, Mike? You've got a month to go in the regular season, and I don't, I mean, you always say, you talk about a gut check. Is this one of those games where you're going to have to just have a gut check? You I think really so. kind of look in the mirror yourself and say, guys, what are we? I think so. I think so. And I think it's up to the seniors. I think it's up to the captains to get these Wildcats going 
and making sure that they're closing down the lanes, they're finishing their checks, they're doing all the things, you know, for the, for the upcoming games that they haven't done necessarily here. Opportunity goes just wide. That just seems so fitting for the way this one's went. Hit in the corner, shot out front, puck comes to central. And Phillips and one of the uh, Rosemont players kind of exchanging little shoves there at the end, but the Rosemont Irish, they come in, they prove why they're tops in this conference right now. They are 8 and 0 in South Suburban Conference play. Improved to 9 and 5 on the season. The Eagle Wildcats back under 500, 7 and 8 overall, 3 and 4 in conference play. And shots in that final period indeed. One shot for the Wildcats, just 14 for the game. Rosemont had nine for a total of 25. And it's going to be real interesting to see what we see here on Saturday night when you've got East, the East View Lightning coming into town. Well, I, you know, and the players, the players know that. The players know that there's there's everything to play for still. I mean, you know, section seedings, you know, finishing in that, for instance, finishing in the top half of the conference versus, say, the bottom half of the conference. You know, it matters for all conference awards. It matters for, for all that stuff, right? So you want to finish in the top half of the conference. The way that's going to happen is by beating East View on Saturday. It's up to these seniors. It's up to these captains. It's up to the it's up to the coaching staff to make sure that these players are ready for Saturday. And that if they're not executing what they what the coaches want them to do, they're not sit there. They sit them. You know, sit them down and say you're going to miss a shift or half a period or something because I want you closing down that guy. I want you on this. I want these passes to be tape to tape. If they're not tape to tape, then what are we doing? Well, what they're doing isn't working real well right now. Well, so. it, didn't, it didn't work tonight against a very good Rosemont yeah, absolutely, team, right? Absolutely. It, so. You know, it, Lakeville North, they played very well and lost. Yep. They played not as well tonight as they played against Lakeville North and lost. So yeah, absolutely. clearly, clearly we know where that line is. They've yep. got to play, they've got to play a certain level of hockey and they did not do it here tonight. Well, we're going to see if they can do better on Saturday when the East View Lightning come to town. So that's going to wrap things up here in Wildcat country. Again, thanks to our crew tonight. Greg Borman, Tom Schreiber running camera. Dalton Gruber's down in the truck. He's Nathan. I'm Mike. Thanks for being with us, folks. We'll see you next time for Wildcat Hockey on ETV.